<laughs> Whose idea was this to do 24 hours in <laughs> I th I'm going to blame Donna and, and Diamond. Just, no, no, it is my. But I'm loving it so far. And really good to meet all of you. Um, but the doors have well and truly opened. We've got uh, the Cambot there. Hello, Kate Rose. We've got Carlos. We've got Danny's back as well. We've got uh, Jodie B in the red top. Nice to have you here. Thanks, mate. We've got. Vilmeri69, is that how you say it? I hope so. Okay. Staring into the void. And who else? Izzy. Hello, Izzy. Uh, right. We're going to just make sure where all systems go. And then we're going to jump into the next talk or lesson, presentation, event, whatever you want to call it. It's about crime and punishment. And uh, we're going to have a great conversation about medieval torture methods and uh, what it's like to be a prison officer and police officer so there's going to be lots to get our teeth into donna welcome uh, oh sorry laurel that's you hey hello hi right well are you ready like i am <laughs> good i was born ready yeah uh, like that attitude <laughs> you're on hour 11 right uh, yeah, I think this is the eleventh or the tenth somewhere. I can't remember. It's not twenty-four. <laughs> that's that's all I know. Um, right, we are just to recap, uh, everybody. If you didn't know already, uh, the reason we're doing this is to uh, send our good vibes and support, and also maybe a little bit of cash if you can spare it to the volunteers that are working for the Italian Red Cross of Lecce. And Lecce is in the south of Italy. Uh, I'm going to show you a little map now because normally when people will ask you where in Italy are you and I usually get down and get near them and say you know Italy looks like a boot and they say yeah and I say I'm in the hill and they say oh yeah that part well um, there we go I'm going to show you where that is precisely if you don't know what a boot looks like so we're going to bring that up just give me two seconds uh, hang on a minute and Right. And it, can I think we it's see... also worthy to note, Mike, uh, Michael, that yeah. um, while we're showing them this, just to remind them that a, a lot of the, um, a lot of what's going on in Italy right now is predominantly happening in the north, but due to the viral infection and affecting so many other people, it is uh, sparsing out to the south and not as much as happening up north since that's where the initial interaction happened. Yeah, that's a great point, Danny. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, I, I'm going to repeat uh, what I said earlier and in response to Danny's point there is that, yeah, we've not seen the cases they have done in the north or maybe in other parts of the world, but it's certainly hotting up, unfortunately. And I hope that it doesn't get to the point that it is. But, uh, you know, there are different parts of the world that maybe suffer more in these situations. When you see a region like Lombardy or Lombardia in northern Italy, which has Milan, which is one of the most advanced healthcare systems in the world, uh, sufferings as they are are then it kind of gives you the frightness thinking jesus what's going to happen if it really does hit full blown down here so look, uh, you, you, i don't i don't care in the end if this event is not really strike on call with you fine no problem at all it's all good yeah, yeah all i all i care about is if it just nudges people into thinking a little bit more about what i could do in my own community so if it's not something you want to donate to or contribute no problem at all uh, uh, the link is uh, going to be shown in a moment but maybe just look at your own community maybe someone needs to get a help maybe not on the neighbor's door Maybe keep the distance of course. If you go to the supermarket, maybe pick up a pack of biscuits and then and a bit of cat food. Um, so there we go. That's why we're here. And um, now today's topic is crime and punishment. So I'm going to jump right off the foot. So this is probably slide number 42 now. I'm just going to see where this takes us. Uh, right, that's slide that's six, seven, eight. We keep jumping forwards. Sorry. Uh, there Whoa. we go. I found it. Ooh. Now. The evolution of the police officer. Um, do we have any police officers in the house? The feds. The feds, as someone said, and this is a good word that you use because it's a typical word that people might use on the streets. Now, police officer is obviously a more formal terminology. And you're in New York City. What? I mean, without being rude, what other, what other words could you use to describe police officers? Police was one. Uh, police, cops, five zero. Um, yeah. 
What else can you say? The blues. Um, the blues, yeah. Blues. Yeah, yeah. that's another one. Okay, good. Um, all right, excellent. So, yeah, this is um, is easy. You are. Uh, I haven't seen you today. Hopefully, so. Okay. Do you want to see, introduce yourself? What is uh, that room? Let me hang on a minute. I'm going to put you on. If you want to allow, if you want to click the hand raise button, everybody, if you've got a question, you want to say something, look to the bottom right, near your right foot, and you'll see a raise hand button. Click that, and I can come to you. Uh, Izzy, if you've got anything to say on this topic, it would be great to welcome you. There we go. Izzy wants to say something. What do you want to say? Go ahead. Well, uh, this is my first time, so I'm just checking it out. Awesome. All right. Where are you in the world today? I'm in Connecticut, in America. Connecticut. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. the, are you a police officer? No, I'm not. No, you're not. Okay, no problem. Well, we're going to look a little bit today at the job of a police officer. And you can see how it's evolved. I mean, on the left, you've got somebody there holding a truncheon, and the man as well on the right next to him is holding a bigger truncheon, a black one. And uh, a truncheon is a key word that we would use to describe this topic. Obviously, it could be a weapon or a restraining method. And then it moves on to somebody with a gun there, uh, and then it moves on to more, let's say, military style weapons. I mean, and, and there's even a drone there above that soldier's head. Do you think this it's a reflection of the typical way that the police officer is moving. Do you think that's true? Feel free to shout out. Carlos, what do you think? Do you think this is a typical evolution that you're seeing in Spain? Maybe. Yeah. And this this is a, a drone, this this thing over I the so. uh, uh, soldier. Yes, I think so. You're a bitch. Yeah, okay, we're gonna get rid of that person. Where are they? Hunt them out. Dealt with. There we go. <laughs> they just happen to be okay. right in front of me. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Dealt with. <laughs> there we go. That's all part of the fun. So, yeah, it's um, good. So, that is the evolution of the police officer. And we're gonna jump forward to the next slide, which is gonna get the conversation going a bit more. And there we go. UK police officers. So, it's, uh, you know, it's maybe not the best page you're going to but it's, it's not bad, to be honest. And I'd like somebody, maybe, um, Narelle, you've got your beautiful American accent. They're sick of hearing my British English today, I think. So, could you read the slide, please, Narelle, and let us know how you would pronounce those words? Mm hmm. The average salary for a police officer. Yeah, Carlos, is... actually, yeah. Continue, Carlos. To any. 11 per year in the United, yeah. United Kingdom. Salary, salary estimates are based on 259 salary Smith and non easily to indicate by policy officer employees who sell uncorrected for okay. us. I'm pressured. Let me stop you there. Pass. Thank you very much. Good. Okay. So the salary there, we would say 29,000. 11 pounds okay now uh -huh. how much is that in euros because you use the euro don't you in spain how much is that in euros i don't know uh, i don't much? know the change Anybody? i don't know yeah, the, no. the change um no sé a cuánto está el cambio between euros and conversion to us dollars yeah okay um, What's the that version? is actually quite low for the industry standard specifically here in the united states uh, we see police officers making about seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars. Wow! Um, and in the UK, that's about thirty-one thousand dollars US dollars for the conversion rate for yep. today's value. That yep. uh, that's pretty astonishing to see that. Yeah, it is. Maybe it reflects the kind of fact that it is an average number. Most of them are just maybe uh, kind of you know uh, junior uh, employees. Maybe it also reflects the fact that maybe police officers don't stay in the job very long and don't therefore increase their salary in the career progression. I do not know, but that's a really interesting point. Yeah. Um, we've. Uh, does anybody else want to add anything? To that? I mean, Diamond, you're out there in the U.S. also in Kentucky. Do you think a police officer is a viable you know career choice for people in your community? Yes, I think here in Louisville, it's a wonderful choice. Um, yeah. I'm not sure they're paid as well as they probably deserve to be paid, but um, yeah. you know, it, it's a good career. Yes, yeah. And when you say the career, I mean, I mean, apart from the money, the the the, the dosh, the cash in your pocket, what else do you think it offers people professionally? I think it 
for people that are extroverted, it offers them an opportunity to be in the community and work with the community. And, and you know, we as many other cities have had disputes between community and the police officer, and they've worked very hard to yeah. um, bring people together. So okay. that's a great yeah. opportunity for public relations, for other jobs. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Margie. Very, very insightful. Um, Norman, you're back. Good to see you again with your green jumper. Um, now, is the police um, officer, is that a job that you think you would like to do? Hello, what's going on? Yeah, uh, it's good about police and yeah. crime, Norman. Would you like to be okay. a police oh, officer, Norman? Okay. Uh, not oh, right you're an actual now. police officer? No. That's not what I want. Now. Okay, not what you want. Okay. No, yeah. Not in the future? Uh, I'm still not really sure. I think right now I want to be like a developer okay. or something. Yeah. For okay. I don't think police officer it's super high up there. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we can say it's not a viable career choice. There we go, Carlos. Carlos, you're not a native English speaker, but you speak English very, very well. But you could say for me it is not a viable career choice. There's a bit of feedback there for Carlos or anybody else. Leandro's over there. Leandro, are you the are you the guy? Uh, you are the Leandro, yeah. The the guy. I think you're the same one. Yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah. We okay. Cool. Same guy, yeah. <laughs> Excellent, good to see you. Now, ah, and there's also, um, yeah, there's Marco as well. So if anybody that doesn't know, Leandro is uh, Marco's son-in-law. He's the husband of Marco's daughter. And he, they actually do English lessons in Rumi and also Engage and in all space. And, um, and actually, we also do Skype lessons as well. And um, Leandro, maybe you could explain as well, since we're on the topic of learning languages. I mean, what do you think are the benefits of learning languages? For example, let's compare Skype versus VR. What do you think are the pros and cons, maybe, in your experience? Uh, well, it's a different experience because um, the, the VR reality uh, um, allow us to create uh, uh, ambient like this, that. that and uh, we can we can see a lot of thing and uh, talk about uh, uh, everything. Um, Skype maybe is, um, f f today is um, a tool um, uh, in um, everybody had. So yes. uh, I think I think uh, it's more access uh, accessible. For yeah, for everybody, so um, it's different. I prefer maybe VR because um, it's more interactive and um, yes. Um, I don't know, but I, I both both uh, is a, a good way to practice and learn uh, a language or um, everything. I think um, yeah, it's a, a good. Uh, um instrument so sure yeah, yeah. good good yeah. instrument good tool and particularly as yeah. well when confronting situations so for example if you go and travel to the uk for example uh, you know how do you order a drink how do you go into the bank for example the post office it's the same coming back to the topic of police officers until you're in that situation you do not know so maybe we can see with virtual reality and in our conversations today how we could use these virtual experiences to train police officers and i'll be interested to get your feedback as we progress in the conversation so let's move to the next slide there. and actually before we do that sorry i'm getting ahead of myself it says at the very end here the typical tenure so pronunciation is tenure tenure um or how, uh, Danny, how would you say that in your American English? Uh, tenure. Okay, so there's a more kind of rounded tongue sound, tenure, yeah? So I'd say tenure, and uh, that's to eight to ten years. Good, okay. So not so long, but um, maybe probably about the average time someone would spend, spend in any job. Let's move on. Now, what's this? Anyone know? Uh, cartel. Yes, how would you say that in English? Prison. Prison. Fantastic. Good, Carlos. You're a star student today. Um, and that's a prison. Um, I won't ask if anybody's been to prison, but maybe we could ask this question. Do you think that, um, I don't know, what question you could ask? <laughs> Have you been to prison? Oh, no, I no, said I wouldn't ask that. No, I think, I think it's, a, Michael, what are some yeah. synonyms for prison in English? Okay. Good show. Jail. Jail. Well, oh, you're Jail. very quick. We've got an expert in the house. Correction right. facility. Oh, what was that? Yeah, correct. 
correction, correction. facility because you want to you because you want to make subjects compliant with society. <laughs> Beautiful. Interesting. Yeah, I like yeah, that. I don't know where it yeah. came from, but I used to hear my parents talk about the who's gal. Who's gal? Oh yeah. Who's gal? Who's gal? The who's gal? I have no idea. How would you spell that? I have no idea. Oh dear. Uh, I'll look I'd spell it phonetically. It so you can okay. Understand. Get a dictionary yeah. out. Uh, okay. Yeah. So there are some uh, interesting terminologies, and also, again, I'm mindful this is in, in, in inverted commas in English lessons. So yeah, those, those expressions that you've heard say correction facility, uh, huskow, um, and also the slammer. There's another one as well. Um, and oh, we're going to look at some other. The slammer. Uh, I love the Penn <laughs> State Federal Penitentiary. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Penitentiary. Penn good. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so the pen. They called it the pen mm -hmm. where I live. Yeah. Huskow. Uh, H O O S E G O W. It's like goose with an H and a how. Who's gal? <laughs> it's a basic yeah. word. I love it. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's a trip down memory lane right there, Diamond. So we've, um, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got some synonyms. And of course, when you express yourself in English, it's always good to try and think a bit outside the box, just like Laurel covered a few hours ago in a creative writing course, just up there by the sunny window. And it's really good to try to think of synonyms for how you express yourself. So, so please try to do that, even if you're a native speaker. But um, when we talk about prisons, I mean, um, do you think it's uh, one of the classic things that people say these days, that prison's too easy. They've got too many luxuries. Would anybody agree with that? Or disagree with that? No, loser. No, not a luxury, Carlos. You think it's a difficult time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. All right. Marco, what do you think? Do you think that uh, prisons should be places where there's no TV, no music, no contact with family? Or should we give them some kind of quality of life luxury? What do you think? Uh, Michael, in these days, we have stuck in our homes, our houses, uh, <laughs> that yeah. are uh, very uh, comfortable. Huh? Uh, but uh, yeah. uh, I feel that I'm like a, a lion in the cage. So I think yes. uh, they staying uh, in a prison uh, with a TV or without a TV is a, a terrible thing uh, in both mm -hmm. cases. So I yeah. think that uh, a TV is not uh, a luxury item. Yes, that's mm -hmm. a great point. Okay. That's deep. That's really mm -hmm. nice. Danny, would you agree with that? What's your experience? Be? I mean, has, do you think this kind of, and oh no, we're talking about, again, it's unavoidable, but this situation of being stuck at home a bit more, have you kind of, has it changed your perspective about your home itself? Not necessarily. Um, I've always <laughs> been more of the homebody myself, uh, only if I need be in extenuating circumstances. Um, yeah. And for the most part, I am completely comfortable with isolating myself in my room. Um, again, I work from home, but for the most part, uh, using VR has really just helped keep me busy. Um, I will yeah. be quite frank and say that had I not had access to a virtual reality headset, I probably would be on PlayStation 4 board out of my mind. Um, okay. And kind of the communicative perspective that we talked about earlier, really being able to collaborate with so many different uh, facets of um, cultures has really allowed me to uh, enhance my interpersonal skills. So uh, it's helped me a lot. Yeah, appreciate that. Thanks, Danny, for your interactions today. Uh, good. If anyone does want to talk, the, uh, the, the the hand raise is on. So you just click that button. We've got a question from Samuel Boy a minute ago. Samuel, can you hear us? <laughs> no. Oh, there he is. Would you like to say something? No, he's gone. Okay. If you do have a question, everybody, don't forget. If there's something I'm saying that you don't understand, for example, from a language perspective, please do stop me. But in the meantime, we're going to jump forward because there's lots more. And actually, some of those expressions we covered earlier. Um, but when we talk about crime and punishment, this is an interesting image as well. Um, whoa, how could we describe this? Does anyone want to try? Matt, mm -hmm. the scientist. Matt, the scientist. No. Yes. Medieval Matt? crime and punishment. Will do less. Yeah. Carlos, how, what's happening in the photo or in the picture, Carlos? I think uh, this woman are bad and 
these people are are worse than the woman and maybe huh. uh, the religion by religion or another another thing she yeah. is go into the river and die yeah and yeah. will die excellent good so the woman is bad or has been bad she has committed a crime possibly excellent and, and a very interesting point there that we can continue on in a moment after i go to uh, another uh, request is that uh, the woman on the right is bad maybe but the people on the left are worse so we'll think about that in a moment um fox silver wolf what do you Hello. want to say about that yeah isn't that the uh, witch trials i think you might be right yeah maybe it's a witch on the right okay and um that was an interesting period in history wasn't it medieval history particularly in europe uh, I, I think and um do you want to add anything to that silver fox anything any little nuggets of information yeah i think i think you're right when you say the the person on the left that's duncan are in the water um i mm. think yeah pretty much i think they were the evil evil side of things rather than the yeah. necessarily the woman being guilty yeah yeah because there was no fair think... trial, really. No, that's a, that's a true point. Good. So the uh, Silver Wolf there said the past simple. Again, I'm a language teacher. That's the past simple, talking about something which happened in the past, specific time. So there was no trial at the time. Um, there is no trial now, or there will be no trial in the future. So you're right. And, but I can't claim credit for that, Silver Wolf. That was Carlos that said that interesting point about mm. you know, the people on the left are not so good. Carlos, what did you mean by that? What, why would you say the people on the left are not good? I suppose these people are very religious and yeah. this woman uh, is not agree with with them yeah. and yeah. maybe she don't didn't have a, a trial uh, with justice yeah that's right yeah we could say justice uh, justice trial she didn't have also the structure in english we we would say she, they didn't agree with her or she didn't agree so just be careful with that so i i agree i don't agree um good okay let's move on then and um, oh actually we've got another we've got a few more questions maybe they want to talk about this um uh, sorry uh, we'll come to laurel far away so what was interesting about this is not only it's a punishment type from a from a day but it also has um, superstition and mm -hmm. because they believed that if you drowned a person the evil or the bad would mm -hmm. leave them and then if they could still breathe afterwards they were healed this was a a twist on baptism that if you <laughs> put mm -hmm. somebody in water and they, if they died, well, then they were right. They were evil. They were bad. But if they lived somehow, then obviously they were cleansed and they were good all along. And that's, it's a weird, weird twist on, on baptism. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Uh, and, oh, that's it. Okay. That's all the questions. I guess as well, it's very easy to look back in the, uh, oh, we've got a few more questions coming through. We're going to come to you in one moment. It's very easy to look at these old paintings or pictures and kind of say oh, they were the bad, they were the good, etc. Mm. But actually, you know, um, it's maybe these days there are things going on which is uh, we also accept because we look at that and think, wow, that's crazy. How could they do that? How could they think she was a witch? But actually, there's probably many things that people are doing these days that people say that's not right. But actually, we can dig deeper and think, hmm, you know, uh, maybe. maybe there's a lot more complex than black and white, right or wrong. Okay, let's go to some more questions. This seems to be a slide which is catching people's attention. Norman, you again. What have you got yeah. to say, mate? So, um, a couple, like, I'll just point out, like, some visuals to, like, so, like, if yeah. the middle evil crime and punishment title wasn't there, like, some ways I could figure out that this was that time period, because this, can I, there in point, or... Because it, sorry, we didn't catch the last five words. Plus, but you're breaking up, boy. Thank you. Yeah, we didn't catch the last five words there, so, um, you can't. Okay, I think I figured out what you said. It's, I'm breaking up, kind of. I think that might be me. No, Michael, I think okay, you okay. need to re enter. Michael is oh, breaking okay. up. Oh, okay. 
Like we're going to be here for any time right before the next slide. Okay. And All right. And so, Michael, we can't understand you right now. So if you could just re-enter. And, Norman, could you just keep making your point while, while Michael yeah. re-enters? Thanks. Yeah. So on the other slide, I'll still talk. But, Doesn't but matter. The but lady, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. But the lady um, wears, was kind of wearing a pilgrim hat and mm -hmm. wearing the proper attire for those days. So that could infer off your point that, that she's religious. And if you didn't notice, like, since I'm like an artist sometimes, but um, they're all wearing black, which black is usually used to demonstrate sadness or anger. So the whole group or was wearing or black. Loss. Yeah. 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 Could be. And mm -hmm. then that one lady in the group was wearing red and she looked very sad, but all the people in black were very happy. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah. yeah, out of pixelated picture. Yeah, you were yeah. out of motion. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it could be. And then, yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's not forget, just, just in general, that, that clothing, um, we only had like two or three colors that clothing could be dyed in those yeah. days, too. But yeah, good yeah. point. Good point. All right, Michael, are you back? All right, we Yay! are. I, or, or I am. Oh, yes. Uh, Robert, Snakebite UK, I recognize that name. <laughs> your life. I, I did. Um, thanks for coming to me. Yeah, I was just going to also raise a point with regards to the lady in the chair being ducked. There was also um, a whole range of homeopathy going on at the time where people would become hermits in caves tucked out the way because if they actually cured someone, they were believed to have spiritual powers. Um, and again, this led to the influence of people telling on people that they're a witch. Um, or a wizard, um, and there was also a double stage situation where it was the moment you're in the chair, you're in trouble because if you were ducked and you drowned, you were seen to have been purified and released your spirit to heaven. And if you survived, you were seen to have been using evil powers, so you were then burnt at the stake. So the either way, it was a bit of a, a bad situation you were in there. Um, but um, again, you, of course, you have the um, Spanish Inquisition type thing where you have people who are devoutly religious going around uh, oppressing people um, to uh, try and force them into a sort of spiritual faith that they wanted you to follow. Um, stones yeah. on chests and things like that. But uh, yeah, so there was other reasons why they were ducked as well, not just because of uh, a question of faith or anything like that. Interesting, yeah, which is a great follow-up to what Laurel said as well around the superstition element of this. And actually, hour yeah. number 23 of 24 uh, at, what is that, 1 a.m. PST, that's in Pacific time, I think is like uh, 5 p.m. in Toronto, uh, 4 p.m. in Winnipeg. I'm getting good with the time zones with all of this. It's going to be 9 a.m. in Italy. Um, we, we're talking about superstitions, and we're going to be talking about everything from horseshoes to uh, black cats and ladders. So don't miss that. If you, if you want to try and do this marathon with me, I'm a, a, a small suspicion, Danny, you're going to be with me until the very, very end. You're not going to bed anytime soon. Um, I'm not going to let you. Right. Um, let's oh, no. now. And then, Michael, I just want to add one thing yeah. real quick, uh, sure. just to interject. Um, I noticed that, um, especially in, in the state of New York, there was a survey that uh, there was a survey that was done a couple of years ago, uh, of course, and, and not to... Um, um, not not to really concentrate too much on it, but the long short of it is that uh, the, the heavy disinterest in public safety has spawned a lot of diminutive um, uh, fear in, in terms of the militarism of law enforcement, uh, be as it may with uh, everything going from Premier Rice to just a lot of the things that have been happening uh, within the, the United States within the last couple of years, which I can understand why. Uh, in, uh, a lot of our guests here, like Norman, have a heavy disinterest in, in law enforcement, and and I think that also serves a disservice to law enforcement for themselves, um, because they're 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 not they're not going out in the communities as, as much as they should to exemplify and set the proper um, the proper perception uh, amongst the community. Um, and I know that uh, here in, in New York, there's there's a large disparity between the NYPD and Mayor De Blasio. Uh, their relationship has just gone really awry within the last few years. Uh, just something I wanted to yeah. touch on since we're talking about this. Yeah, you know, it's, it can be a quite a controversial, sticky subject. And, and I think as well, you know, this is very much an education 
experience as well. We've got educators VR as well uh, supporting us in this event. And, and one thing's for sure is that when you become a police officer, you end up doing uh, things that you never expected doing. And it's the same teaching as well. You kind of get into these professions, even as a doctor or a healthcare worker involved at the moment across the world with this pandemic. And you kind of actually subject that I love, for example, but you find yourself half the time being effectively a firefighter in the classroom, trying to put out little fires over here and there while other fires are starting in the other corner of the room. Um, so, of course, I'm not condoning any uh, certain situations that go on with regards to law enforcement, but it's really a difficult one, isn't it, uh, to try to uh, regulate, manage, and also on a kind of a grassroots level, uh, you know, support the police officers in doing the right thing all the time. So you're right, Danny, that's a great point. Um, right, have we got any questions? Uh, Laurel, you're coming up as asking a question now. I don't know if you've got anything oh. to add. Well, I just no. wanted to okay. say that um, we've had a lot of turnover recently in um, the Portland, Oregon area, having with our uh, captain, the police captain, um, captain of the force and I, I was curious about it and I did a little looking into it and I found out that um, in order to get into any form of management you either need to be a long-term officer but they are not looking for long-term 20 30 year old police officers cops they're looking for people with psychology degrees mm -hmm. with um, social work experience with management and business M uh, MBAs, uh, the Master of Business Administration degrees. They're looking for people with bachelor degrees, a minimum of four year degrees to go into administration of policing. And you are required to have, at least in our state, a minimum of an associate degree. That's a two year college degree to before you can even apply to be in the police department. So it's really easy to dismiss them as, yeah, they're just these guys who used to be bullies and are now cops. Mm. To, they're actually educated people who want to make a difference in the world. And they come from a variety of careers, many of them, who decide at 25 or 30 or 40 years old that they want to become police officers and then they change. So they bring that knowledge and experience with them. And we just don't appreciate that because we judge them by what we see on TV or, or the stereotypes. And I think we need to give them much more credit. Well said, very well said. And if anybody does want to continue that you know there's no pressure to follow the slides we can abandon the slides and continue that point all day long if you want um good okay well the questions are still open but in the meantime we're going to move forward to another slide to maybe put a different perspective on all of this and there we go a thousand tabs open there we go so this is a bit more of a historical uh, image and i put this together uh, late last night. I'm trying to think why I put that up. Um, why did I show that? Any ideas? What is it? What's happening? Oh, I remember now. What's the crime? It's quite a difficult one. Where do you think this is? Britain. Britain? Britain. Yeah. Rule, the Royal Britannia logo up on the top coin. Symbol well spotted. Queen of Britain. 1763 you're right well spotted there yeah this is actually in england and this is the crime okay and i, uh, I read about this last night I'll, I'll tell you what it's about and we can have a conversation about it. and this is about the um the asylums in london yeah so the uh, the mad houses that they used to call it maybe slightly politically incorrect and this what this is is that family members would uh, commit their own next of kin their their mothers their fathers their brothers and sisters and cousins they would say to the authorities this person's crazy this person has lost their minds they need to go into the asylum and so the family would commit the member to the asylum in order to take their money or take their belongings or clothes or valuable items and that was quite a common crime at the time and it was difficult to regulate so what you've got there are people half of them are actually don't belong in these you know situations which maybe this kind of resonates with the modern day maybe uh, systems as well the infrastructure you know is there the uh, the conversation with the people that are going into these places you know, I'm maybe getting out of my depth on this topic but the point is that there are crimes that went on in the past that maybe continue now. And, you know, this is maybe the hidden aspect of the crime as well. People being committed for things which they never even did. If you've got any questions, you can click, click that raise hand button. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. So you, Feel free to interrupt me. The Section 8. 
Oh, yeah, sorry, Robert, go ahead. Now, sorry, my friend, nowadays I should have clicked my hand button. Um, there's um, a thing over here that, which they term as sectioning um, someone, which is the modern legal term for it, which, again, if you feel someone has gone past a certain level of self-competence, uh, that mm. they can be, by other family members, sectioned into nursing care. Um, wow. So that's a modern version of what you've got there on a slide, uh, but uh, yeah. it still doesn't go down very well. <laughs> no, no, with the members no, absolutely, concern. absolutely, and yeah, thanks for your contribution again there, Robbie, because you use the word yes to section, which is a verb, and, um, yeah. and let me give you another grammatical structure that someone touched on. I think it was Carlos who's just made his way back in the room there, but you could use the conditional or if structures, yeah? So in English, you could say, if they thought you were a witch, they would dunk you in the water. So if they, plus the past simple, if they thought you were a witch, they would put you in the water. So we use that structure to talk about these hypothetical situations. So for example, I'm not French, but if I were French, I would, I don't know, live in Paris. I can't speak Mandarin, but if I could speak Mandarin, I would communicate better with people maybe in China. So there we go. That's a particular structure. I think I lost used 10 minutes ago. I just wanted to draw your attention to and it's, and it's going to be on the YouTube, YouTube live stream. So if anyone wants to have a little bit of English, there's a camera for you. Let's jump forward to the next slide. And yeah, that's basically talking about uh, what I just said. Um, Robert, could you read that, please? Because you speak very well. Uh, you're from the same country as me. Far away. <laughs> Thank you. Conspiring to have family members committed to asylums. As Sarah Wise describes in her book, Inconvenient People, they were a good number of cases where people were committed to lunatic asylums by their nearest and dearest for entirely selfish reasons. Since diagnostic systems for mental illness were at an early stage of development and there were no consensus over what and was not evidence of lunacy, doctors were able to argue that people who were eccentric in some way, rather than clearly ill, should be committed to an asylum, losing control of their affairs in the process. This gave an opportunity for unscrupulous relatives to gain control of the unfortunate person's money. Very good, thank you, Robert. Um, does anyone have any questions about language there, vocabulary? If you do, card lots of everything clear. Do you, do you understand all the words no, there? No, not at all. Yeah. Any, any questions about one word in particular? The, the word uh, asylums in the first part. Uh, yeah. Conspiring to have family member committed to Asylums. What is asylums? So the pronunciation is asylum. Asylum. Yes, yes. Good, yeah. And it's basically, a pl and I don't think this word is, I don't know if we use it anymore. I don't think, Laurel, you might be able to jump in on this, Robert, as well. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, it any, is. Maybe. Yeah, asylum's used, but, but I'd love to have a quick exploration of the synonyms because those are yeah. very popular. Yeah. Synonyms, anybody know? Alternative expression and for the asylum. The only ones that uh, I know mm -hmm. that have been involved in are state hospitals. What used to be called yeah. asylums. S state hospitals? Yeah. yeah. It's hospital for crazy people. A crazy yeah. people, yeah. Uh, one. <laughs> funny Insane farm. Asylum. Yeah. Yeah. Farm. Insane yeah. asylum with funny farm. Looney bin. Looney bins. Good one. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, word the term. Yeah, it, go ahead. Far away, sorry, Laura. Mm -hmm. No, no, go. No, loony. so, so yeah. lo loony just means, yeah, a little bit crazy. I think it probably comes from lunatic, uh, something to do with yeah. the, loon, the la luna, uh, maybe. Um, and a bin, obviously, where you throw your rubbish in the street. So it's basically, effectively, like a bin you'd put the, the crazy people in. We'd say loony, L-O-O-N-Y, bin, Laura. Yeah, in the 1950s and 60s, um, and, and even before, around the 30s, 20s and 30s, um, states became in charge of taking care of mentally ill people and uh, because private hospitals were too expensive and so the government stepped up, state governments, so they weren't federal, they were state. And um, that then funding ended in the, in the late 70s and then people were literally overnight out on the streets. 
But when somebody referred to a state hospital, they meant a mental institution, a loony bin, an asylum, all those terms. But we refer to them as the state hospital right. without putting that. And I want to bring up one of the, the slang terms that we use is Bellevue. Um, mm -hmm. There's a very famous asylum in, I think it's New York, New York. called Bellevue. Isn't that right? And so people yes, would make good. jokes about how, well, you'd be, mm -hmm. you know, parents would threaten children. You'd be good or I'm going to send you to Bellevue. And that I live is, in Bellevue. Well, I lived, grew up near Bellevue, but a different state. But that became a, a that town, that name became associated with that. Mm -hmm. And so um, just letting you know that, that if you do hear that, you know, reference, that's what that's from. Yeah. That was, um, maybe the, the English people in the house can help me out. I think Bedlam as well. Was that, there was a Victorian Bedlam. hospital. Yes. Yes, uh, Bedlam, yeah. And they I think also it, use cranial electronics. They used to put a metal yeah. frame around your head and zap you with electricity to oh, cure right. the fever of the mind, as they yeah. used to call it. And now they've yeah. found that they banned that, but they have actually found yeah. that um, uh, it's e ERT, isn't that what it's called? Um, is now used to actually deal with depression. ECT. E yeah. It's dealing with depression. And I've actually watched people have that and gone from. Here's another word, catatonic to normal. <laughs> so you want to do catatonic? That's an, that's an insane word. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to avoid that because I have no idea how to spell that. Um, oh, catatonic? Right. It's cat a tonic. Yeah, that's no. what you have spelled. But you know what it means. Listen, if... You don't, you don't know how to spell it. Uh, uh, sorry, let me just let me just do some kick. There we go. Yeah, I'm that's okay. I, I, I've, uh, you don't know how to spell that. Ordinarily, I would, but I've been in for almost twelve hours now. I think you can let me off, Robert. Oh, C A T A T O N I C. <laughs> uh, we're going to move forward now, everybody, to the next slide, and it's a bit of a, an open question because we like those. There we go. What do you think? Oh, that's one that I could be on this topic now for another hour. <laughs> I actually do historical tours in my hometown here. And I find, because where I go, I go into a prison area in this, and we talk to people about the felons register. Nearly, well, I'd probably say 80% of the people that were in the felons register are there purely to survive. They weren't wow. there um, to say they're murderers or assault they're actually they're stealing oatmeal they're stealing foodstuffs they're stealing clothes off of people's washing lines mm. so is it a crime i would say to the person who lost the bread yes but to the person who's mm. stealing it for the right reason probably not yeah so it Great depends point. how you look at it sure what about perspective uh, um should we ask Marco, Marco, uh, the man in northern Italy? There he is by the window. Give us a wave, Marco. Do you, do you th what do you think about this? How would you answer this question? Yes, it's a mild crime, but it's My a crime. Mind. Okay, if you uh, need something, ask me. I can uh, uh, give you, or I can uh, uh, regalare. Yeah, Nick like, um, to like you. yeah, that's it. Re refuse? Yeah, but so, uh, please okay. don't uh, uh, steal um, my things, okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah, good point. Okay, so maybe a bit of community yeah. spirit is what we need. All right, good. So the next question, again, quite open. Uh, I'll jump forward. It is, <clears throat> what do you think is the most common crime in your country? Uh, we'll start with Carlos. You're in Spain right now. What do you think is mm. the most common crime in your country? Sorry? What do you think is the most typical uh, crime in your country? Do you understand that? In my country, um, more typical familiar uh, man who killed his wife. Oh, wow. I'm going to Spain. Um, right. So we... Um, okay. 
May, so you could say maybe we could make it a bit broader and say domestic violence. Domestic, one domestic, domestic. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we yeah. could say domestic violence could be one. So not necessarily killing, um, but maybe you know, uh, badly treating both both sides, men, women, women, men, and the children mm -hmm. maybe as well. We could include in that. Okay. Thanks, Carlos. Um, anybody else want to say anything? Danny, uh, Laurel, feel free to chime in. We've got um, we've got. Well, I'd say things. theft. Theft, in, my, yeah. in my neighborhood, uh, people are breaking into homes. Is the volume down a bit, good. Well, that's been, uh, I can hear. Breaking into homes. So Ryan, did you did you say you say you said breaking into homes? I said theft. So is that about right? Well, yeah, but they're stealing toilet paper, Michael. Ah, uh, the new goal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So, yeah, I, I don't have the answer to this question, but um, never mind. It's not like it's being live streamed. Knife. Yeah. Sorry. Knife crime, probably. Knife the crime. UK, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's on the rise. Yeah, and there's certainly things. Um, Marco, Leandro, you both live relatively close to each other in northern Italy. What do you think is the most typical crime in your part of the country, in northern Italy? Any ideas? Yeah. Uh, who, who don't pay the taxes? Or, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I think this is uh, a type of uh, crime, and I think it's the, the um, thing we we find the more um, common. So. Yes. Yeah. Good. It's like, it's. it's Sure, more common, or maybe the most, the superlative, the most common possibly. Excellent, very good, yeah. I've just, I've just Googled this. Um, we're going to come to you, Alex, in two seconds. Car crime as well, theft, and also um, yeah, burglary, which is property crime, which many of you spoke about. Alex, you're waving at me. What, what do you want to say? Yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Alex. I am, I'm from Russia, and I think Alex. that um, uh, our main crime here in Russia is corruption. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's more, it's typical or not, but uh, it causes more, more uh, harm to Good. economics and in general to life. Yeah, yeah. Good point. I think in the US yeah, so. we could probably add that too. I think we could add that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, I yeah. think yeah, I think most countries probably could, and um, you know, there's certain countries in the world, naming no names, that you they, you know, they kind of people say, oh, they're, they're corrupt. But actually, if you look a little bit deeper in our own countries and cultures, in so-called developed Western nations, you're going to see a lot more corruption, and actually might be, you know, maybe uh, reported. Um, and it's that hidden side as well, you know. Uh, so okay, yeah, good. Uh, we, have we got any more questions? Alex has answered. Yeah. He's come to that. We, we don't have I was going to suggest uh, uh, cyber yeah. crime is, is growing. Um, where I'm from, sure. so I, I live in DC, and so we're getting a lot of things. Uh, not too uh, too many months ago, the city of Baltimore was shut down because of cyber crime. Oh wow! Okay. Well, um, pretty much holding cities um, information for right. for ransom. Um, right. So they had to really kind of redo all of the email addresses and um, city employees lost their information. So we're starting to see that really grow um, across the country. Okay. Wow. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Times are changing. As um, Robert, to my right, uh, to most of your left there, he does uh, talk about historical crimes in the past. And I'm a bit of a fan of family history. And when you look at those records, yeah, it's like stealing chickens, clothes, and, you know, kind of a, a knife or something, and they're all being drunken and disorderly. But, um, you know, uh, the, the modern crime, they'll be looking back in 300 years at the records published to, today, and it will be, yeah, those kind of digital crimes. And what do you think about crimes in the future then, since we're on the subject? So we're talking about digital crimes, but what about in a hundred years what do you think are going to be the crimes then any ideas probably 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 stealing um, data stored on crystals or something the, the wow. new data storage devices maybe yeah could be stealing your spaceship yeah could be anything okay 
Good. Um, right, we're going to move forwards. We don't have that, that much long left, and I've still got... I mean, how would you deal with very young criminals? This is the, the final open question. So you talk about rehabilitation. That's another word, isn't it, that we use in this top, uh, context. That's a, a, a regular verb for the English learners out there. Rehabilitated is the past. Um, how can we deal with very young criminals? I don't know, you're 14 years old. Is the best option prison, isolation, or what? What's the solution? Margie? My, my first thought when you said that was work. Work? They need to okay. learn the, the value of work. And yeah. to have somebody show them and help them. Sure. Yeah, great point. Robert, you're asking to speak. What's your point? Yeah. Um, on my tour, we have a 13-year-old young lad um, to actually... Uh, sorry, hold on. I've just got your message. Just boost that up a bit. There you go. Um, I've got on my tour uh, a young lad called Arthur Rook, who was 13, and he was given two years for burglary and larceny. And they actually got him to turn a handle on a wooden box in his prison cell, which was filled with sand and grit. And the inside of the handle, there was a flat paddle. So it was like dragging that through the sand and grit, turn after turn after turn. And he had to turn that handle between 10 and 12,000 times a day before going to bed. Now, that was a wow. child's form of hard labor in the 1760s. So give Excellent. you an idea. Yeah, I hope you're staying for the later less, uh, later events, Robert, because you are a, an absolute font of information. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think you should be standing up here rather than me. But yeah, that, that's wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Well, by the way, where are you offering these tours? Um, I'm actually doing tours in a VR world called SomniumSpace.com. Uh, okay. You can go there, download the client, go in in VR or 2D, and you can <laughs> find me. And uh, I do London tours, or I do our local Welsh town tours, and things like that. Lots of history. Fantastic. Definitely need to check that out. Yeah. Um, send us a message, Robert. I think you definitely yeah. someone, I'm sure. I don't mind. Uh, if you don't know Lorel already, we should get you on board and get you doing some some work with this educating VR community. Absolutely. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> All right. History of VR. We're signing you up. If anybody else wants to get involved, it's, it's never too late. Um, don't worry. There's no initiation or anything dodgy going on. It's all good. Yes, there is. Don't um, tell them. No. <laughs> good. We're going to jump forward now to some expressions. And we mentioned about the slammer, the, the loony bin. These are kind of expressions we spoke about, asylums and prisons. But um, you can see up here, doing time, doing porridge, behind bars. Those are expressions that we use in English, meaning being in prison. Um, porridge. Uh, give us some hearts. Who likes porridge? No, I didn't think so. Oh, there we go. Rob, I knew you'd like. You, see, you, you look like a porridge. I'm, I love a bit of porridge as well. There we go. Um, a porridge is. Um, oh, is it? Well, how do you describe that, Robert? Uh, people don't know what porridge is. <laughs> porridge really is something made out of oats, which is mm. usually um, taken into a bowl and added with either warm milk. Um, sometimes people add honey, raisins. You can add to it really whatever you want. But it's a yeah. thick sort of gruel. Um, and again, that actually comes from history. I could be here all night, I tell you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, they used to have something called a pottage, which was actually a potato gruel mixed with oats. And uh, mm. that would be given to prisoners when they were being marched from London down to the docks to go off onto the prison ships. Um, so that's wow. where porridge comes from. Interesting, yeah. So, and that's the classic food that they serve in English prisons. And in most, um, uh, well, I'm looking. At, we've got lots of Italians here, and you're looking at me, probably thinking English people. You know, their their food culture is not that great because you know, we've got the great, uh, beautiful flavors and stuff like that. But um, porridge is something that is, you know, it's real central heating for the stomach. I think it's how they advertise it on TV a few years ago, and um, it really does get you through the day. So that's a typical breakfast, but that's what they would serve in prison. We've other, got other expressions here as well that like go on the straight and narrow, which means be on the straight road, effectively. You know, not committing any crimes so don't worry he's on the straight he's not we've got to cook the books does anybody know what that means to cook the books kind of accounting when you want to uh, do it yeah that's it 
the way it might do good. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Yeah, you're right. So in other words, and actually I've got the next slide here, which gives the explanation. Uh, there we go. So cookbook books means to modify financial information uh, in company accounts. So there we go. Of course, we are not advocating that here, um, uh, but that's just one of the terms we use. And then to pull a fast one, which means to cheat someone. And that's a very general expression. So, for example, I don't know, you could be walking down the street and someone asks for five dollars, euros, pounds, whatever your currency is, uh, five rubles there for Alex in Russia. And they say, can you give me five rubles? And then you give it to them. And then they run off and maybe, you know, they pulled a fast one in the sense that you thought you would give it to them to buy some food, but maybe they did. And, you know, they just cheated you in some way. So there we go. There's some typical expressions we use in the English language. Well, listen, everybody, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to get a chocolate biscuit again. I'm, uh, it's uh, biscuit number 12 for me today. I like to have one every hour to keep me going and a glass of juice. Thanks very much for coming. Thanks for the love. And you know what, actually, since there's so many people here, sorry to interrupt, I've got another slide, which I want to bring up right now. Let me just show this. And it's a bit Italian for you. I want you to all come forward to the big screen. We're going to do a big selfie in front of this. And it's just to give a bit of support to the people out here in Italy who are having a bit of a hard time. And the hashtag of this, Andra Tutto Bene. In other words, everything will be good. Everything will be fine. It will all go well. So if you can all stand here, send some hearts, uh, up and look over there to the camera that's floating above the sky. Se volete venire qua vicino allo schermo, scusa se non parlo benissimo, possiamo dare un po' di, diciamo, motivazione, inspirazione ai italiani in questo momento difficile. Guardate in su, lì vicino alla finestra. Get over look here, get over here. Erica. Come over here. Everybody get over here, there please. Selfie, selfie, selfie. Andrà tutto bene. Everything will be okay. Yay. <laughs> Send out the hearts and the claps. There goes okay. the Thanks, everybody. I'm, I'm, I'll be back in this very space in about three or four minutes. Mingle amongst yourselves. There's some zero kilometer organic snacks down there by the stairs. And if you don't mind, I'll take a right. moment to talk about educators in VR, Michael, while sure. you're gone. Thanks, Laura. Thanks. All right. All right.